So firstly, what is a boiler? It's a closed vessel made of steel. And boiler er main purpose to hoche steam produce kora. Are steam to different industrial purposes use kora hai. So the function is to transfer the heat produced by the combustion of fuel to water and then ultimately to generate steam. So the steam produced is used for generating power and steam engines or steam turbines, heating the residential and industrial buildings and performing certain processes in textile industries. So boiler properties, a boiler should have the following properties for performing properly in, in the industry. For example, it should be safe, safe under different operating conditions. Then comes accessibility, the various parts of boiler should be easily accessible in repair and maintenance journal and then comes capacity it should be capable of supplying steam according to the requirements so at the industry that that's called journal jay puriman steam door card at the boiler ticket shay puriman steam general generate corazer efficiency should be able to absorb a maximum amount of heat produced due to burning of fuel in the furnace the boiler should be simple in construction the initial and maintenance cost should be low and it should be capable of quick starting and loading. So boiler classification, boiler can be classified as the following types. For example, it can be horizontal, vertical, and inclined. It can be fire tube and water tube. A boiler can be externally fired and internally fired. It, there is pulverized fuel, supercharged fuel, and fluidized bed combustion boilers. There are also high pressure, low pressure, poor circulation, and natural circulation and stationary and portable boilers. So in this video, we will be discussing about the main types of boilers. So now there's fire tube and water tube boilers. So what is a fire tube boiler? In the fire tube boiler, basically the hot flue gases are flowing through the tubes and the water is surrounding the tube. So I'm gonna figure take a dictabatsi. J tube the hot flue gas pass cut the chalidike water as so it a camera fire tube boiler both the for example cock run and locomotive boiler and in the water tube boiler we see that a tube the water pass cut the say is a blue colored the water was an oce and that chalidike hot gases as so it a camera water tube boiler both the very for example sterling babcock and wilcox boiler So now externally fired and internally fired boilers. The externally fired boiler is the boiler where the boiler furnace is outside the shell. And in the internally fired boiler, the boiler furnace is inside the shell. So from the figure, we see that in the externally fired boiler, it has a boiler shell or boiler furnace has a boiler shell and by it. So this is called externally fired boiler. For example, Babcock and Wilcox boiler. And a figure the camera dekta bachi je boiler shelter boiler shelter bhitori boiler furnace to abustan korte se. So this is called internally fired boilers, for example, Cochrane and Lancashire boiler. So now forced circulation and natural circulation boilers. So in the forced circulation boiler, there is a pump. So with the help of this pump, the water is flowing from this to this direction. And in the natural circulation boiler, there is no need of pump. So the water is flowing due to natural convention. So the example of natural circulation boiler is Lancashire and Babcock boiler. And the example of four circulation boiler is Velox and Lamont boiler. So boiler mountings. So boiler mountings are the main parts of boilers which are mounted on the shell. So there are mainly seven boiler mountings. So firstly, the water level indicator. It indicates the level of water in the boiler. And then comes the main steam stop valve. So steam stop valve are kaach hoche. Je steam ta boiler theke steam pipe jatche. She steam er flow ta ke control kora. And then comes pressure gauge. Eta boiler e je pressure ne kaach korte se. She ta measure kora hai hoche pressure gauge er kaach. And then comes feed check valve. It regulates the feed water pump supply to boiler. So feed water pump take a water to flow. She water flow take a control. 
feed check valve cards and then fusible plug it works as a fire extinguisher it prevents explosion due to overheating of furnace plate so boiler kaaj korte korte jodi furnace plate overheat hoye jay so eta eta jeno explode na kore seta ke prevent korai hocche fusible plug er kaaj and then comes blow down valve ekta boiler er niche je bibhinno dissolved solid particle gula joma thake shegulo ke ber kore deye hocche blow down valve er kaaj and then comes safety valve it blow up the excessive steam into atmosphere and maintain pressure within the safe limit now boiler accessories the accessories are the parts of boiler which is used for the efficient running of boiler but these are not mounted on the boiler shell so boiler shell er baire egulo obosthan kore but ekta boiler efficiently run korar jonno ei accessories gulo important firstly economizer Economizer is used for heating the feed water supplied to the boiler by utilizing the exhaust flow gases. The superheater is used for drying the wet steam. The air preheater is used to heat the air before flowing into the furnace. Our feed pumper does what? To push water into the economizer before it goes to the boiler. So this is the schematic diagram of a boiler plant. So we see that. Firstly, the air is entering the air preheater, where the air is preheated by the use of exhaust flue gases. So, air preheater is an accessory, and then from this direction, the air is going to the boiler. And then, similarly, by the use of feed water pump, the water is flowing to the economizer, and then from the economizer, it is going to the boiler. So, thus, the steam produced from the boiler is then going through the superheater. So, superheater. is heating the wet steam to dry steam and then it goes to the engine so this is the main function of the boiler plant so now properties of steam what is steam steam basically is the gaseous phase of water it is produced by heating of water and carries large quantities of heat within itself so it could be used as a working substance for heat engines and steam turbines and steam does not obey ideal gas laws but in the superheated state it behaves like an ideal gas so the conditions of steam firstly there is wet steam wet steam basically it out say dry steam or some water particular like a mixture je jekhane the water er evaporation ta complete hoy na and then comes dry steam where all water is completely converted into dry saturated steam then a dry steam ke further heat korar pore jeti paoa jay seta hocche superheated steam so now this is the temperature enthalpy diagram for the formation of steam at constant pressure so from this diagram we see that from minus 10 degree celsius the temperature has increased to 0 degree celsius so ekhane a point theke a point te temperature badtese but it is in the solid state but the phase is not changing so when the phase is not changing but the temperature is changing we call it sensible heating and from this 0 degree celsius ice to This zero degree Celsius liquid, the phase has changed, so, but the temperature is same. So we can call it latent heat of fusion. And from this zero degree Celsius to this hundred degree Celsius, the temperature is changing again, but the phase is same, which is liquid from this point to this point. So we call it sensible heating again. And from this hundred degree Celsius to this point, the temperature is also same. this is 100 degree celsius so we call it latent heat of vaporization where the vapor is formed and from this vapor to this point the temperature is again increasing so it is going to the superheated state so this is how the steam is formed at constant pressure so latent heat and sensible heat are the two types of heat which plays an important role for the formation of steam
So now enthalpy of steam, the enthalpy of liquid or sensible heat can be denoted by HF and the enthalpy of evaporation or latent heat can be denoted by HFG and the enthalpy of wet steam, this is the formula, where the enthalpy of wet steam is H, which is equals to HF plus XHFG. X is called the dryness fraction of steam, which will be explained in the next page. And the enthalpy of superheated steam is HSUP. This is the formula, which is the summation of enthalpy of liquid, enthalpy of evaporation, and this, this is the temperature difference between the superheated temperature and the saturated temperature. And the C subscript PS is the specific heat of superheated steam. So what is the dryness fraction of saturated steam? It is denoted by X we saw in the last page. So this is basically the ratio of the mass of dry steam to the total wet steam. So MS plus MW is the summation, which is called the total wet steam, where MW is the mass of wet steam and MS is called the mass of dry steam. So now wetness fraction, it is the ratio of mass of water vapor, that is M subscript W, to the mass of total wet steam, that is MS plus MW, so which is denoted by one minus X. So now specific volume of steam. So what is specific volume? Specific volume of steam is the volume occupi occupied by steam per kg of its mass. So firstly, the specific volume of dry steam, it can be directly found from the steam tables by putting the value of the temperature or pressure and then comes the specific volume of wet steam. So in the, from the specific volume of dry steam, the specific volume of wet steam can be found from this formula. And then the specific volume of superheated steam can be found from this formula where TSUP and TSAT are the temperatures of superheated and saturated state. And VG is the specific volume of dry steam. So now this is the internal energy of steam. So this is the main formula where H equals to U plus PV where H is the enthalpy, U is the internal energy of steam, P is the pressure of steam and V is the specific volume. So UG is the dry, is the internal energy for dry saturated steam, which can be found from this formula where VG, the specific volume, of dry steam can be found directly from the steam tables. And by putting this value, we can find the dry saturated steam. And then the internal energy of wet steam can be found from this formula. Energy and V is the volume of wet steam. And then the internal energy of superheated steam can be found from this formula where VSUP is the volume of superheated steam. So this is all for me. Thank you.